Now I can say good morning. Hi everyone, my name is Aisha Dixon. I'm the director of the Emeriti Retirees Relations Center at UCLA. Um, and we um, help facilitate and coordinate activities and programs with our retirees association that's here today that's, that um, organized this program. Um, I put some information uh, about our department in the chat and you can also see um, our bi-monthly newsletter and since we are recording this Zoom, um, we will be posting it to our YouTube channel later today. And you have uh, the link for that YouTube channel as well. So that way, if you have to leave or step out, you're more than welcome to um, watch the video later once we upload it. Um, I will be uh, muting everyone. So that way we uh, cannot have any distractions for our speaker today. But once we have the Q and A's portion, I'll allow you to unmute yourself. So you're free to go ahead and um, type any questions in the chat that you have and we'll answer them at the end. So without further ado, I'm gonna introduce Judith. Yeah, Judith. Okay, okay. I'm gonna introduce Judith so she can introduce our guest speaker today. Judith, take it away. Okay. Did I Michael, did you wanna say a few words before I introduce Sarah? Um, just thanks to Aisha and you, Judith, and the rest of the program committee and uh, for sponsoring and bringing forward great programming for all our members. So Judith, I turn the floor over to you. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Um, as you may know, or you may not know, I, I discovered quite uh, by surprise, LAX is undergoing a major transformation as it expands and it modernizes its facilities. And as it grows, so does the LA art, uh, art program, the LAX art program. So this morning we have a virtual tour with director Sarah Cifarelli of LAX's 14 current art exhibitions. Um, I will tell you a little bit about Sarah. She has been there since 2008 and has managed the LAX art program. Uh, presenting diverse and memorable art experiences to enhance and humanize the travel experience at LAX and the LAX flyaway bus terminal in Van Nuys. They feature local and regional artists through temporary exhibitions, permanent art installations, and cultural performances. The LAX art program provides access to an array of contemporary artworks that reflect and celebrate the region's creative caliber. And the best part of it is this morning, because we're virtual, we can see what you would not be able to see if you were leaving for a trip from one specific terminal and coming back through that same terminal. So I'm going to turn it over to Sarah. Take it away and welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you for that introduction, Judith, and for inviting me today. Uh, thank you, Aisha and Michael, for all your help in pulling this together. It's really wonderful to be here. Uh, I'm very excited to, uh, to take you all on this tour. Uh, I'll go ahead and start sharing my screen if that's okay, uh, so I can bring up my presentation. Okay. Right. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Okay. Yes. Awesome, okay, great, all right, so, um, Yes, I'm Sarah Givarelli, I'm the LAX um, Art Program Director, and uh, we're here today to talk about the art exhibitions that we currently have on view at LAX Airport. So uh, my job is to oversee the art program staff and the activities produced by the LAX Art Program, uh, which include three program areas, the Exhibitions Program, Public Art, and LAX Presents. And LAX Presents is our uh, music and cultural performance program. Um, I'm specifically tasked to deliver innovative art experiences that welcome the public to LAX and advance our city's reputation as the cultural capital of the world. I also work to ensure that the art program remains sustainable through the art fees that are generated through the airport's capital improvement projects. And the art program is comprised of three full-time staff and one part-time staff. So we're a small but mighty team. We have to cover a lot of ground at LAX. So our mission statement is to present diverse and memorable art experiences to enhance and humanize the travel experience throughout the airport. And we deliver those art experiences through rotating art exhibitions, permanent public art commissions, and music and cultural performances. 
In terms of fulfilling our goals, we're extremely fortunate to live in a city that has a robust population of diverse artists who reflect the creative spirit of Los Angeles and help define our city as a first rate cultural destination. And we pride ourselves in presenting art by local artists, which matches LAX's goal of bringing more LA to LAX. So the LAX art program was established in 1990 and has grown to include art exhibitions, permanent public art, and music and cultural performances. We've partnered with the City of Los Angeles's Department of Cultural Affairs for our art exhibitions and public art commissions since 2002. For our LAX Presents performance program, we partner with two organizations, Dub Lab and Rum and Humble, to connect passengers to authentic local culture. In 2019, we presented 38 performances, but due to COVID, we've had to pause our LAX Presents program. Uh, we are looking forward to restarting our LAX Presents program this fall with uh, live performances in the terminals. So Art at LAX serves as the city's welcome mat and its calling card as the airport is often the first and last place for visitors to Los Angeles. Art at the airport helps create vibrant and fresh public spaces. So today, as I mentioned earlier, we'll focus on our art exhibition program. LAX has one of the most developed and active airport art programs in the United States. We present up to 20 exhibitions a year in collaboration with the Department of Cultural Affairs, and we've produced more than 150 exhibitions during our 19-year collaboration with them. We currently have nine exhibition sites, but we are expanding, and we expect to triple our sites to 27 by 2024. We have exhibitions on view in both pre-security and post-security locations, and they are typically on view for about a year. And we're very proud that many of the artworks we've presented at LAX were created specifically for display at the airport and can only be seen at LAX. So we're gonna start here in Terminal 1, uh, which is Southwest Airlines, to view the exhibitions that we have at Gate 9, Gate 10, we also have a new extension to Terminal 1, and then as well as in baggage claim. So at Gate 9, uh, we have uh, presented an exhibition by Craft in America called LA Made. LA Made is a group exhibition curated by Craft in America curators Emily Zayden and Alex Miller. It presents the artwork of Tanya Aguiniga, Carrie Burkle, Fern Jacobs, John Lupto, Gerardo Montorubio, Po Shun Long, Carol Sisson, and Joan Takayama Ogata, artists whose work is renowned in the world of contemporary craft. Craft in America is a Los Angeles-based nonprofit organization that promotes and advances original handcraft works via a documentary series airing on PBS, on its website, and through ongoing exhibitions and illustrated books. The exhibit's curated objects are indicative of the breadth and range of materials that artists draw upon to create art in the 21st century, including ceramic, glass, fiber, metal, and wood. These artists explore the metaphorical potential of their materials and draw upon historical precedent to imbue their work with meaning and beauty. Beyond the realm of design, these sculptural works help redefine how craft is viewed on the world stage. LA Made is on view for our ticketed passengers in Terminal 1 at Gate 9 on the departures level through October 2021. So here are a few um, details of works that are on view in the display case. On the left, we have Carol Sasson's suspended sculptures, which are made from zippers and clothespins. Carol collects things like sewing notions and women's vanity items and incorporates them into her works. She likes the practice of recycling undervalued and overlooked materials. These common manufactured items are reminiscent of her childhood and are the building blocks of her art. She also enjoys the patterning and repetition her artwork process emphasizes. And in the center, we have a sculpture by Po Shun Long. He's an England-born Southern California sculptor, furniture maker, and former architect. He's a self-taught woodworker who incorporates various types of woods in his work, some of which include debris from natural disasters or scraps from other artists' work. The work we see here references sea coral 
and shows his interest in organic sculpt sculptural shapes. And then on the right, we have Gerardo Montorubio, who's originally from Oaxaca, Mexico, and now calls Southern California his home. His work is influenced by murals, prison drawings, graffiti art, and old etchings. His complex narratives explore the dark corners of the Mexican immigrant experience and LA's tough contemporary street culture. So just to the right of the display case, we also have a long wall that is available for us for programming. Um, in this case, we've uh, decided to uh, commission a, another artist, um, but in the past we have created a group exhibition across the display case and the wall. Um, in this case, right next to Craft in America is a site-specific installation by Alexis Soto. Um, the name of her installation is called Cochare, and it's an experiment in recontextualizing antique symbols and motifs from weaving in a site-specific mural. These motifs are based on the artist's um, research on Albanian kilims, or also known as flat weave, um, flat woven rugs. While many of the symbols featured in the mural pay homage to the ones found in many countries that were uh, part of the Ottoman Empire. Uh, she was inspired by the kilims and, and textiles of her grandparents' um, homeland of Albania. Um, her mural emphasizes motifs that celebrate women's craft, work, and innovation. Originally, rugs from this region were made, for, uh, made by women for brides uh, for when they were moving into their new homes. They contain symbols of aspirations of a young bride, such as love, abundance, harmony, fertility, and protection. Most of the motifs in the mural are drawn from Kilim's Zoto studied in Southern Albania, while the motif in gold is found in Kilim designs from the North uh, uh, part of Albania. By changing the palette, material, composition, and scale, Zoto brings this ancient art form and domestic object into a contemporary context. Kortari is on view for, again, ticketed passengers um, on our departures level uh, through October 21. So on the right is a time lapse of our crew installing the mural. Um, many times at the airport, we do have to install after hours. So we're, uh, we have to pull a lot of like graveyard shifts. Um, and that's because we have to uh, always ensure that uh, hallways and um, circulation areas are free of any, um, uh, you know, we can't block any passenger um, circulation areas. Um, so there are times that it can be very challenging to, to work at the airport, as you can imagine, because basically we're always open. And on the left is a, is a quote by Alexis. Um, and one of the things that she's very intrigued about and, and likes to sort of um, study in her work is how the symbols in the Albanian textiles and rugs are sometimes, they, uh, they look very familiar to, uh, they might look very familiar to us in terms of maybe uh, symbols um, found in other cultures around the world, such as Guatemalan and Navajo. And I, she loves the idea that even though these are from very different parts of the, of the world, um, it shows that we have more in common than, than not. So moving on, um, also we're still in uh, Terminal 1, we're now over at Gate 10. Um, and we have a solo exhibition by Anna Carey, um, and it's just around the corner from the main food court in Terminal 1. And Anna's show is titled In Search of Rainbows and Stardust. We have a little video again there on the right-hand side, that's part of her exhibition. Anna carries photographs and videos of imaginary interior and exterior architecture spaces that present a There we go. Um, that present a generic global architectural style that feels both familiar and dreamlike. Carrie's fascination with vernacular architecture, which is characterized as ordinary functional buildings reflective of a region, began while she was growing up in the Gold Coast, a popular holiday destination on Australia's East Coast. The Gold Coast is famous for its beaches, surf spots, and theme parks, as well as its mid-century motels and hotels that were meant to project fun and fantasy to attract vacationers, as well as for its modernist homes that embodied glamour and space age influences found in, the, in popular culture. Later, Carrie traveled throughout the United States and eventually relocated to Los Angeles, 
where she was able to see many of the original buildings whose style had influenced the architecture of the Gold Coast, as well as other urban landscapes throughout the world. By mixing memory call, reality, and imagination, Carrie interweaves model making, photography, and film to create spaces that reflect a global uniformity of the built environment, thereby evoking a sense of deja vu in travelers. Um, this is a selection from her Rainbow series. The photographs and video of interior spaces comprise Carrie's In Search of Rainbow series, where rooms are based on a dominant color of the rainbow spectrum. Carrie constructs a miniature fictional architectural space. Here, the rainbow hued images explore the connection between place, memory, and color, and the connection's ability to evoke sensations housed within our interior world. So what's amazing is like, for example, this one on the um, lower left, uh, this blue one, she had actually set that outside um, in Palm Springs. So the mountains that you see here are actually the, the, the mountains of Palm Springs, but it, she is able to create these, um, these worlds, um, you know, basically almost creating like these doll houses. Um, and they're just in incredible, the, the level of detail she takes them to. We have two examples from her Stardust series, which is also on view um, as part of this show. Her Stardust series is based on the exteriors of Stardust motels from all over the world, exemplifying a homogenous style of architecture that has been copied and cloned, creating a familiar refuge for the traveler. Upon closer inspection, the photographs magnify Carrie's handmade models, revealing that the edifices are constructed miniature objects. So Southwest Airlines recently expanded Terminal 1 and LAX held a grand opening in May. So this new building serves as the front door for Southwest's terminal and will eventually connect with the automated people mover or uh, it's really an, an elevated tram that is currently under construction and will open in 2023. Uh, the building doesn't have any airline gates, it has bus gates, um, but it does serve as a security checkpoint, so it has a TSA checkpoint there, and it basically serves as a hub uh, to passengers who need to connect to other terminals, and they do that via buses on the airfield. So we'll go and have a, a peek of what we just recently installed in this brand new space. Um, we commissioned uh, two murals for this new entry lobby. This one's by Topher Chin, um, and the other one is by Renee Fox. Topher Chin's work encompasses paintings, sculpture, large scale public murals, and installations that challenge perspective through conventional concepts of form, color, and scale. His practice encourages viewers to further their understanding of their physical surroundings by reflecting on one's internal architecture of thoughts and emotions. In this light filled lobby, viewers may observe how the mood of this site-specific mural changes throughout the day, creating a space to contemplate rigidity versus fluidity. And here's another view of the mural with, um, with a view of the air traffic controller. You might be able to see a little bit of the construction of the APM over here. Uh, the track is elevated. And then once the tram opens in 2023, this will actually be the new entry uh, for passengers because there will be a pedestrian walkway from the tram that will cross over the, the road and connect to the building. So they had to build the building first and then they'll connect it uh, very soon so that it all comes together in, in 2023. Um, Sarah, could I ask a question? Does that mean at that time you would no longer be using the buses to take people out to on the uh, in the at the airport, you know, on on the airfield. Yeah, uh, we this this terminal uh, does have bus gates um, on the lower level, so uh, passengers do check in here. They go through TSA security. Right now, the buses run the passengers down to the new extension at the Tom Bradley International Terminal, the Bradley West gates. Um, so it's primarily right now um, a, like a bus uh, transportation hub. But eventually it will be uh, um, sort of the main area where everybody will check in for their flights. And uh, Topher's mural measures about 22 feet by 36 feet. 
All right, and then the second mural we commissioned for this space is for Renee Fox. It's called Technicolor Pandemonium. And this site-specific mural pays homage to some of LA's most beloved icons of the natural world, which, orig which have originated from other countries and have adapted to the city's urban landscape. And one of the most recognizable of these is the wild parrots, the bright green and red crowned birds that can be found all over Southern California. Um, they were taken from Mexico for the pet trade, um, and these birds were either released or had escaped back into the wild and have grown in number throughout the Los Angeles region since the 1960s. Their vibrant green feathers, which are actually yellow, yellow feathers cleverly laid over blue ones, and crimson crowns give these flamboyant birds with their loud squawks an unforgettable presence as they fill the skies above Los Angeles. The title of her piece is a reference to the fact that a flock of parrots is known as a pandemonium. And here's another view of, of Renee's work, which is directly opposite of Topher Chin's uh, mural. Um, and her mural is right above the entrance. This is where you would enter into the new TSA checkpoint. Um, and her mural measures 36 feet by 13 feet. So as this lobby extends Southwest uh, Terminal One, we invited Craft in America to install a companion exhibition in the display cases that, um, uh, as a companion to the display case they did at gate nine, for these display cases that uh, flank the uh, bank of elevators right there in the main lobby. Uh, the case on the left is themed as LA made and it references how Los Angeles has been an epicenter for the handmade and contemporary crafts since mid the mid 20th century. And the case on the right is themed as LA scenes and it displays work that is inspired by LA's sprawling neighborhoods and iconic sites. And the bottom photo shows how this uh, suite of exhibitions are part of the new installations that are on view in the, in the lobby along with Topher Chin's mural. And then we can't see it in this photo because it's basically it would be behind us if we were standing in the space, but uh, Renee Fox's mural. So here's some details of some of the works that are in the LA Made display case. On the left, we have a ceramic work by Ben Medansky, and his work is inspired by the natural and man-made environments of Arizona, Chicago, and Los Angeles. And he's especially influenced by brutalist and modern architecture and industrial design. And in the center, we have a work by Mary Little, uh, who's a sculptor and uses canvas to create abstract sculptures, which she refers to as tapestries. They evoke memories of the farming landscape of her Northern Ireland homeland. And on the right, we have uh, a work by Catherine Gray, who uses glass and the history of glass blowing to comment on larger issues she's passionate about, the environment, society, and community. For Gray, uh, glass is both present and absent, known and unknown. And then on the right hand side, uh, these are details of the works that are part of the LA scenes display case. On the left, we have Roberto uh, Benavides. He's a sculptor uh, specializing in the pinata form. And he uses layers and layers of paper to build up the surface. Um, it's almost like uh, if you see this work in person, it's almost, it has a, an incredible texture to it, almost like as if it were fur or feathers in the way he builds it up like a pinata. And on the right, we have Karen Koblitz, uh, her LA landmark plates. Um, and this series features plates with iconic uh, images of iconic sites around Los Angeles, including Watts Towers, Venice Beach, Hollywood, and yours truly LAX in the upper right-hand corner. All right, so moving on, we are uh, still in Terminal 1, but we're now um, in a corridor that is post-security and down the road as part of uh, LAX's ongoing construction, this corridor will connect to Terminal 2. So eventually all of the terminals will connect post-security. Um, our terminals on the south side of LAX, meaning uh, from Tom Bradley all the way to Terminal 8, already connect uh, post-security. And we're doing the same thing now on the north side. So this will be Terminals 1, all the way to three and then it'll connect to Tom Bradley. So that means that you don't have to, if, you're, if you've landed at Southwest, but you need to connect to, to Delta, which is in terminal two or three, 
you can remain behind security. You don't have to go back out and, and recheck through uh, TSA. So this is a work by Karchi Parmalin. It's called uh, LA Rhapsody Supermoon Opus Number One. And it's Karchi's personal dialogue with Los Angeles in the form of a large scale photograph, uh, photographic mural and atmospheric sound installation. This mural is inspired by the first known panorama, which was painted by Robert Baker, who immortalized the life and times of Edinburgh, Scotland in 1787. Upon first encounter, LA Rhapsody portrays a majestic view of the city. And then closer inspection reveals that the artwork serves as a platform to examine the daily life of the city. It reveals a world where the iconic, the privileged, the mundane, and the underrepresented coexist within a stone's throw. This large scale photograph is an epic visual experience of Los Angeles in a larger than life scope. LA Rhapsody measures 65 feet by five and a half feet and includes a subtle atmospheric sound installation capturing the sounds of the city. So this is just one sort of detail of the photograph. As you can see, it's quite large and it's really amazing. It's really fun also to see, uh, you know, kind of to guess, you know, what part of the city and which neighborhood he's captured. And then he stitched it together in a way that's really compelling. Uh, and it's really quite fun. So now we're moving downstairs to baggage claim. Uh, this is open to the public. And we have uh, Susan Logarecci, who has created uh, two installations or two exhibitions for us. Uh, this first one is called Window Seat. And Susan Logarecci um, uh, creates drawings of contemporary urban landscapes. And her art explores themes of uncertainty and optimism within our cities. When viewing her artworks up close, every individual window and roof that makes up the city is visible. From a distance, you see an intricate grid that is, that is as much planned and stable as it is fragile and disordered. This exhibition, Window Seat, explores views of the city from what looks like an airplane seat window through a series of paintings and a site-specific mural. The organic handmade aesthetic gives viewers a new perspective on their city and the chance to see it as an outgrowth of our human nature. And this is an installation view of her window seat series. So you can see we have a nice long wall here and it kind of mimics uh, like the window of the windows of an airplane. And here we have some details um, she's depicted the 110-105 interchange on the left. In the center, we have the iconic Hollywood sign. Uh, and on the right, neighborhood pool, sort of that, that um, classic uh, you know, view from the, the plane of the many swimming pools that you'll see scattered across the landscape as you approach LAX uh, from an aircraft. So this is her companion exhibition to window seat. Um, because again, this is part of the extension that Southwest did in Terminal 1. So once the, the baggage claim expanded, um, it made sense that there's this wall that basically continues from, from this wall, or I'm sorry, um, this, oh, sorry, one more. This wall uh, continues to the left. So it made sense for us to ask Susan if she would mind um, exhibiting some additional work that felt related to, to window seat. So, um, what we're showing here is an installation she's calling Overlay Layover, and it features drawings made with colored pencils. Her drawings of urban scapes combine geometric and abstract patterns with aerial views of dense neighborhoods and cityscapes of Los Angeles. Susan is inspired by the Art Deco patterns found on the downtown buildings of Los Angeles, op art patterns, as well as seismic and zoning maps. And here's a detail of two of the works. The quilt-like aesthetic found in Susan's drawings depict the humanity of our communities and connections to one another. So now we're gonna move over to Terminal 7 and we're just sort of following the horseshoe of the central terminal area. And we have two exhibitions on view right now. In the ticketing lobby, we have a, a site-specific installation by Deborah Scacco 
and a site-specific installation by Eileen Cowan. Uh, this is a view of the Terminal 7 lobby. At the far uh, left here is Deborah Scacco's installation. And then right here above the ticketing counters, United ticketing counters, we have an art gallery. Um, and this is a view that Judith saw when I presented a few months ago to her group. Uh, we were featuring Olga Law here in the display case. And then we had Luciana Bate on the walls uh, that are part of the gallery. We just deinstalled this last week. Um, so we'll, we're preparing the site um, for a new installation, or actually a new group exhibition. It'll be curated by uh, John David O'Brien, and that should open, that'll open in mid-August. So that's something to look forward to coming very soon. So this is a, a more detailed view of um, Deborah Scacco's in, uh, installation, The Letting Go. So The Letting Go is an installation that investigates the complex relationship between past and future, leaving and staying. Inspired by Luciana de Crescenzo's quote and her family's own immigrant uh, immigration journey by sea, Deborah's work questions the singularity of origins, history's impact on destinations, and our layered relationship with the space between. Formed from a world map and composed of 20,000 feet of rope, this complex web connects the seven continents to, seven, to, to the major bodies of water and detached land masses, rendering visible the traces of the journey. And the quote here is, uh, I think it's just a beautiful one by Luciana de Crescenzo, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, it's, uh, many immigrants had brought on board balls of yarn, leaving one end of the line with someone on land. As the ship cleared the dock, the balls unwound. After the yarn ran out, the long strips remained airborne, sustained by the wind, long after those on land and those at sea had lost sight of each other. Um, so next up is, um, is an example of uh, one of the artist videos that we did in 2020. We actually did four artist videos because we had all, we had several new exhibitions that opened either uh, like a few months prior to COVID or literally within a week or two before um, everybody had to um, uh, pivot to telecommuting and, and travel was really sort of uh, curtailed. Uh, and we still wanted to share the artwork that we had on view at LAX with, with the public. So we made these artist videos and we did four of them. And it was our way to bring art to, to everybody who was sheltering at home. And this first one is, uh, I'm gonna let it run, is um, Deborah Scacco talking about her work. Let's see if we can get that started. My name is Deborah Scacco and I'm an artist based in Los Angeles. My work is really inspired by my family. My father came from Sicily to New York City in 1949, just after the war with his mother and his sister. My grandfather had to stay in Sicily because he didn't have his papers and it would be another two years before he could join them. In 1921, my mother's father came with his mother and brother through Ellis Island, uh, again, shortly after the war. Um, and shortly before the passing of the Immigration Act of 1924, which likely wouldn't have let them in. It was really on understanding how immensely impacted my family was by the shape of immigration policy that I started to study the structures of permission that dictate how we live, and have since dedicated my practice to telling the stories of people most impacted by these lines. The first time that I articulated the piece was in 2015, and that articulation was really about my family's history and our own sort of geographic journey from, uh, you know, the 1920s to now. Um, but when I was asked to install this piece at LAX, I immediately knew that I had to rework it to honor not only the journey of my family, but the journey of immigrants past, present, and future. So the piece, as it's articulated now, rep it represents a world map. And the seven large pieces that, um, that the braids descend from are actually the seven continents 
and each of each thread in each of those consonants is connected to 19 pieces, which represent land masses and body of water. So the piece is represented at LAX is intended to transcend boundaries and borders and the structures of permission that say yes or no. Um, and it's really about all of us being connected to one another, uh, moving across land and water, um, and also structures of access. It seems natural that the work would live in public spaces. Um, again, that's why showing at LAX was such a privilege and an honor to have the opportunity to share this work with such a huge diversity of people from all over the world. Um, I hope the piece gives a, a moment of respite, a moment of calm and a kind of meditation on the traveler's journey and not just their journey, but the journey of their families and all who came before as a way of thinking about where we've been, where we are, and where we hope to go. Oops, there we go. That's one of the videos that we did last year. Um, and um, because we had, um, we saw our numbers really drop off at LEX in terms of uh, the travelers, we've extended um, Deborah's piece and it'll be up uh, probably through the end of the year right now. Um, and we're really enjoying it. So next up we have Eileen Cowan who did an installation called The Portrait Project. Rushing through the airport to check bags, going through security, boarding the plane, we do not always pay attention to the employees helping us. The person checking us in could also be a mother, father, sister, maybe a poet, artist, fisherman, or entrepreneur. Eileen Cowan's series of portraits highlights the people who work in various capacities at LAX and explores their diverse identities and characteristics. Eileen set up a photography studio in our main administration building and set up 30 minute blocks with airport employees to photograph them and learn a little bit more about who they are outside of work. She tried to capture a moment that was created through the collaboration. Did they strike a pose? Did they laugh at her jokes? Eileen is interested in gesture and body language and wanted to deliver dramatic, open and straightforward portraits. By keeping the background minimal, she wants the viewer to focus on the exchange between the photographer and the subject. And this is an installation view. This is a long hallway that connects uh, Terminal 7 to Terminal 8. It's all united. Uh, terminal 8 is primarily domestic gates. Um, but uh, her format is almost like a film strip. It's very cinematic in that way. It works very well along this long sort of horizontal uh, space that she's defined. And I really love this quote by Eileen. And she says, it was a privilege to meet and work with these wonderful people. I hope I did them justice. Um, and I encourage you to check out her video. I have a link at the end, um, uh, but it's wonderful. Uh, her video shows some of her past work and how uh, it really influenced the work that she did at LAX with the Portrait Project. So I invite you to explore our website to see all of our current and past exhibitions, as well as our permanent public artworks. Um, if you are on social media, the airports projects are occasionally featured on our Instagram and Facebook accounts. Um, and like I said, I hope you'll take a moment to uh, enjoy the artist videos we did as part of the LAX at Home series. We did the, we saw the one by Deborah Scacco, um, Eileen Cowan has one. And then we also did one for Luciana Bate and Olga Law, who were in the gallery in T7 that we just, Terminal 7 that we just deinstalled. Their videos are also really wonderful. And it's wonderful to hear about their process and see some of their um, past work examples. Um, and all the videos can be found on our art program website. Um, uh, they're usually posted on the artist exhibition page where, they, where we've um, documented their exhibition. 
So in closing, um, art at LAX reflects the identity of Los Angeles, its inspirations, its values, and its imagination. I just want to thank everybody for joining me for this virtual tour. And I hope that you'll have a chance very soon to see some of this artwork in person for yourself. And we look forward to welcoming you at LAX. Thank you, everybody. Um, we can open it up for questions now, if you'd like. Great. Thank you. Oh, the camera's off. Um, fantastic. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to um, visiting LAX in August when I go on my vacation. So we'll I'll have to make sure I go to which terminal I'm in to see where I, what I can go see. Um, so I did open it up, everyone, to um, unmute yourself. So if you have a question, please go ahead and feel free to um, either raise your hand um, in real life or virtually with the icons at the bottom. But let's go ahead and open it up to any questions. I think we saw a couple in the chat, so we'll start there and then we will open it up to people um, asking questions. So one question I saw in the chat is, um, when planning um, is done for new construction, at what point are you involved with the art component? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, we like to be at the table as early as possible. Um, oops, let me uh, stop sharing. Is that okay if I stop sharing? Okay. <laughs> uh, we like to be at the table as early as possible so that we can um, be on the same page as the designers, as the architects, and um, identify locations for the art exhibitions. Um, real estate's always uh, challenging at the airport because there are so many sort of programmatic functions that uh, you know have to be built into these spaces. Um, and they also have to make space for the concessions as well as for the advertising program. So uh, it, it can be a competitive process, but generally speaking, um, we, we all find the right places for us. Uh, for the art program, you know, we actually have a, a good relationship with our colleague who runs the, uh, the ad program. And um, the spaces that we're interested in are not always the same ones that she's interested in and, and vice versa. So we've been able to, to work it out um, really well in terms of uh, kind of creating these zones. We'll carve out uh, an area for, for art and then she'll, she'll carve out an area for, for advertising or for concessions. Um, and so uh, once we're at the table, we can um, really ensure that we make the ask for the infrastructure we need to support our art exhibitions or our performing arts program. So, you know, we have electrical needs, we need uh, the walls to be able to support artwork and things like that. So um, it's important that we're at the table early so that we can get that built in as, 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 um, as part of the design process. So we're usually at the table um, during the, um, you know, the early stages of design uh, as early as, you know, 20% uh, uh, so that we can ensure that any of our information is included in the architect's drawings and plans and, and so that it gets built as part of the building. Great, thank you. Um, the next question is, um, who pays for the artists? So uh, the airport, like I said earlier, is always, uh, we're always undergoing construction and uh, we're doing capital improvement projects. And the city has two public art programs. And uh, one of them is uh, known as the Public Works Improvements Arts Program. And that's any time uh, a city agency, whether it's the library or Parks and Rec or the fire department or the airport undertakes uh, new construction or uh, undertakes a, a renovation project, um, if they are spearheading that, um, that, that project, that's considered a capital improvement project and it's eligible to be assessed for a public percent for art fee. Uh, so that's one way that we generate fees that are then used in, um, in our programming. We also participate in the city's other public art program, which is uh, for, it's a, a, a program that is geared for private development. And that's any time, say, a new target is being built in the city um, with the airport, it's when the airlines undertake um, uh, development of a terminal or, you know, renovation of a, of a, of a building or construction of a new building at the, at the airport, but they're considered the developer, then they're assessed uh, a, a percent fee as a private developer. And both of those um, 
essentially streams of, of, um, of, of funding fund the art program. Um, and so all of our um, fees uh, that we pay out to the artists or to the curators or, or to the art handlers to help us install the exhibitions or for the performers who do um, our live music uh, performances, all of that is paid through uh, the art fees that are part of these public art programs that the city of Los Angeles manages. Next question is, is there a start time for the live performances to begin again? Ooh, good question. Uh, we're just gearing up right now. I would say we're hoping to have uh, performances in place, I would say by September, October. Um, we've had the two companies that we had, uh, we had just uh, contracted right before COVID hit, we basically kind of had to put them on hold um, at the beginning of 2020. And so it's going to take a little time. We're we're ramping up, and um, the uh, the companies will be putting together a menu of performers. Um, and so we're we're looking to you know um, bring those back into the terminals in uh, in the fall. So hopefully September October I, I would say. Great, thank you. Um, that's it for the chat question. So Judith, you want to go ahead and ask? You have to unmute. Nope. I had another question in the chat. That's what I was just going to say. There was one question in the chat. How much from... of the time do the artists approach the airport and say, oh, I'd love to be part of an exhibit? And how much of the time do you say, oh, let's see if we can get so-and-so to be part of an exhibit? Yeah, uh, great question. So both, we do both. I do get um, inquiries from artists who have seen uh, our exhibitions at LAX, or perhaps they had um, you know, a friend who was featured in an exhibition and they, they do reach out to us and ask, hey, how can I be included? Um, so what we do with the Department of Cultural Affairs is every two to three years, we issue a call for exhibition proposals. Um, and that is disseminated through the Department of Cultural Affairs, usually through their website and through their, um, through their mailing list. They maintain a mailing list of about 7,000 artists, curators, and and you know, arts providers um, uh, throughout Southern California. And that's how we disseminate that opportunity. Um, in our last call, I think we received about 150 submissions. And then what we do is we um, narrowed it to, I think about 30 or 35 uh, submissions that we accepted as pre-qualified proposals. And then we use those over the next couple of years, you know, Throughout our, um, throughout our terminals, throughout the airport. Um, when we do that call for proposals, artists can um, indicate which location they're interested in because we include information about the exhibition sites in the call, in the uh, request for proposals. But if they're not sure, that's okay too. We can help um, place their work in, in the spot that we think would be appropriate for, uh, for their artwork to be displayed. Are, do you have art uh, installed in some of the other terminals as well? Uh, we do have a display case in the Tom Bradley International Terminal. It's for passengers right after they um, have you know, passed through customs. And it's along a hallway that then connects passengers who are connecting to a flight. So maybe they've landed LAX, but then they need to connect to Atlanta or San Francisco. They pass through this hallway. We have a display case there. It's about 40 feet long. Um, it's been, um, we've been upgrading it over the past year. We are um, upgrading the lighting. And so we're hoping to have um, everything completed, I would say by early fall with the lighting so that we can continue programming it. It's one of, it's been one of our more popular display cases because artists can do all kinds of installation work and um, it's a great, it's a great, you know, display case. So, and so we're looking forward to bringing that one back online once the lighting is, is upgraded. Um, but as the terminals, as the airlines are renovating the terminals, uh, we will have more spaces to program. So Delta used to be in terminals, I think it was five and six. And then a few years ago, they moved to terminals two and three because it gave them more gates. Uh, so they're in the process of um, doing a major renovation on terminals two and three, and we'll have a whole new set of exhibition locations in, in those terminals. 
Um, same with Terminal 4, which is American. We actually haven't had any temporary exhibition space in American. Um, and now that they are, um, they're just about to, they're mobilizing for construction and they'll be launching their construction period in the next few months, we will have um, exhibition sites there as well. So what's, it, what's great is that we're really building this presence of exhibition locations around LAX and, um, and we'll really be sort of at that front door location, just like we were in the Terminal 1 extension. We're kind of replicating that model at every terminal because every terminal will have these connections to the, um, to the tram via the pedestrian walkway. So that's really the new front door at each terminal and we're, we're gonna be there front and center. That's wonderful. Yeah, I have, a, question, everyone. I have a question about the live performances. When you do start, how, first of all, where will they be? And the second thing would be, how would someone know about the performances? So our performances, uh, we don't build a stage or anything like that. Some airports do that. Like I know they have that in Austin and I think they have it in Dallas, uh, Love Field, is they actually build a, a stage. And we don't do that. We need to be a little bit more nimble at LAX. So we do more like pop-up performances. So we, we do make sure that at certain locations within the terminals, we've added the, you know, the infrastructure so we can support, you know, a soundboard and amplifiers and speakers and, and all that kind of, um, you know, equipment that's needed for a live music group. But they're generally like pop-up performances. Um, in the past, what we've done is we've set a schedule for the whole year. And then we'll post that on our website. And, um, and then as the performance date draws clear, we work with our public relations division to, um, to do like a press release or a media alert to let passengers know, hey, this is, hey, this is coming. But a lot of it is just, you know, discovered by the, you know, the folks who happen to be, you know, moving through that space that day are traveling that day. It's it's kind of a nice way to sort of bring a little bit of surprise and delight to the to the passenger. Thank you. There's two questions in the chat, and I think well, one is kind of um, what, about the art in the different terminals. Is there a booklet that lists where the art is in each terminal so people can have like a, a booklet or brochure when they're walking through? We haven't done a printed booklet, and that's because um, we worry that. Uh, a lot of times people will discard, you know, something, you know, in the terminals and, you know, newspapers, magazines and whatnot. So we've, we've kind of stayed away from a physical book um, to avoid the, that sort of those, those leave behinds getting piled up. Um, but we do have all the information on our, on our website. And um, I think we're going to be, because we're expanding so much uh, with, you know, the art program has so many new locations. I think we're going to start grouping them by terminal. So it's a little easier to find, hey, I'm going to be at terminal one or I'm going to be at uh, terminal three. Um, so we're going to probably do a little bit of a reorganization with our website to make it a little bit more, e you know, easier to find based on whatever terminal you might might be in. Um, did I answer your, did I answer your second yes. question? Okay. No. I, so the second one is any long term plans for the Olympics? Oh, good question. Well, um, the the tram that we're building is, is a big part of that, right? Because that was part of our bid, uh, the city's bid when um, it made the bid for hosting the Olympics was that we would have, you know, this, um, you know, new transportation system in place at, at LAX. Um, in terms of the, of the art program, uh, a lot of the spaces that we're building now are what will be ready in time for the Olympics. So as I mentioned, uh, each terminal will essentially have a new front door and uh, artwork will be part of that welcome to, to the world as they um, arrive at LAX. And another question is, security is important at LAX, um, but it would be nice to have like an LAX art pass so people can see art in any terminal if they're not rushing off to catch a plane. Yeah, great idea. So like I mentioned earlier, um, LAX is connecting all of its terminals uh, post security. So eventually you'll be able, I mean, if you have the time, you would be able to walk from terminal one all the way around the horseshoe um, to, to terminal eight because all of the terminals will be connected um, behind security. So ultimately that would be the goal. You'd have to arrive pretty early because <laughs> it might be a couple miles of walking <laughs> and pack good walking shoes. But, um, but ultimately that, that, that's the goal that 
all of the terminals would be connected so that you could go, you know, to different terminals, even if you were flying out of one, you could enjoy the amenities in another terminal. All right, any other questions? The, those are all the ones from the chat. So again, if you have a question, please feel free to raise your hand and unmute yourself. We'll give it maybe another four minutes um, so we can wrap up this afternoon's program or this morning's program. Um, I have a question. The people mover starts off the airport property and then travels on. Is there plans to have art installed in the, the jump off point? Yes, excellent question. Okay, so outside of the airport, you're right. The journey does start about, I think it's about two miles, two and a quarter miles east of LAX. Um, LAX is building new facilities, new parking facilities. Um, one of them is called the, the CONRAC and that stands for the Consolidated Rental Car Facility. Uh, right now, when you rent a car at LAX, um, you know, it's these individual shuttles would come into the CTA or its central terminal area. That's part of the, you know, sort of what's contributing to all the congestion there at the airport. And, you know, you take your, your shuttle to Hertz, you know, it's just not very efficient. Like a lot of airports, LAX has created this consolidated building so that you go to one building and Enterprise, Hertz, budget, all of them are there. So it's, it's one building that houses all of the the rental car um, companies, as well as all the cars themselves. Um, so that's the most Eastern um, facility that LAX is building. And that will have um, a large uh, video art screen there that will have an opportunity for video art in the plaza. Gotcha. Um, we'll also have a, a video art screen at the um, ITF East, which is the Intermodal Transportation Facility East, which is just uh, just ne not too far from the, uh, from the CONRAC. And then at the um, ITF West, um, which is just west of the ITF East facility, another parking facility, it will also house our new badging office, which um, uh, currently is um, off of Pershing, um, but this will uh, create our badging office just off, so it's more uh, efficient or uh, easier to access for employees off the, off the tram. Uh, we are building a plaza in between the, eight, the tram station and the parking facility, and there will be public art in the plaza. Um, and then we're also looking at those pedestrian walkways that I mentioned that connect from the tram to the terminals. We're looking at um, installing sound installations in those pedestrian walkways. So we're looking at different ways that art can sort of um, be part of the passenger journey, you know, from start to finish. Marvelous. That's a great idea. Thank you. Yeah, we're excited. Okay. Any other questions? Let's see. I don't see any hands up. Do you want to give us some final words, uh, Judith or Michael? Or I want to Stephanie? Or Sarah? Sorry. I want to thank Sarah for taking us on a uh, virtual journey of the art program at LAX. I think it's exciting and we now all know what to look forward to. Um, I do see a question. The recording will be made available uh, later on, but I want to thank you again, Sarah. It's really exciting to see all of these artists. And I did uh, notice that even some of them, I think, have been associated with the metro, some of the metro art as well. Yes, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So it's wonderful that all these artists have this wonderful opportunity to represent our city. Thank you very much, Michael. Anything you want to chime in? Uh, I, I issue my thanks as well, uh, Aisha and Judith and Sarah. Very informative. Uh, Going to have to arrive a lot earlier to be able to take in some of this great installations that uh, that you've shown us today. Thank you for that. I think I just thought of a question, but it'd be really interesting to see if you have any student artists that if someone's from UCLA, we would love to be notified or kind of in the loop if you ever do like a student um, art program, because we would love to see other Bruins over at LAX. Absolutely. Yeah, that's a great idea. Uh, well, let's stay in touch about that. Please. Okay. okay. All right, everyone. Um, have a great afternoon. Um, stay safe. Thank you. Stay distant. So wear a mask. Happy. All right. And I'll, I'll email everyone the YouTube um, video later on today once it finishes uploading to the cloud. Okay. Thank okay, you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care.